Hello friend, it's Mark out in the back 40. And for the last two or three months, we've all been sitting out in our tree stands and our deer blinds, putting in hours and hours and hours of hunting. And we're getting towards the end of the season now. It's mid-December here in Michigan. Uh, still muzzleloader season, but we're pretty much about done. And so my mind, like yours probably, as I'm sitting there for all this time, starts wandering and thinking like, what can I do to make the property better next year? What can I do? to make my setups better next year. So this is the time to start thinking about that, to debrief your season and think about what you can do to your property. So I'm gonna do the same thing you're probably getting ready to do. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it on a few videos and think out loud. And why I'm doing that is I hope that you can relate to this, you can learn something from this, and you can give me some suggestions on things that you think I could do on the property too. All of this is to help us as a group get our properties better, faster, so we can get more enjoyment. are looking at an overview of my property it's a 40 acre square so this video I just want to go over some of the high level things on the property and then as the series moves on I'll drill down into the specific areas uh, and talk to you about the reasons why I did something some things I've tried some things I have tried that haven't worked and uh, just again just to help you get ideas and thoughts on how to get your property better faster so maybe I'll start a little bit wider than this just a, a big overview to see if you can relate to any of this on your property. 42 acres, it's square, it's a very flat. <laughs> the biggest elevation change on this is probably 10 feet. I mean, from this, this oak area over here where you can see my cursor down into this low area here is probably, I'm, I'm guessing eight or 10 foot of elevation change is very flat. So you have hilly property. I, I can't relate to that and talk a lot about that. But I think there's probably enough just basic ideas and concepts on properties that help hold deer that we can find things and share ideas with each other to get better, whether you have hilly country or flat country. So um, outside of the property to the west right here, you can see is a farm field. You probably have a farm field maybe around your properties too. If you're in an ag mix area in the Midwest, um, you might be in deep timber. So you're going to be a little bit different. We'll drill into some of the things I think about that when I get inside the property. But right now I'm going to talk about the outside of the property. To the west here is a farm field. To the north is a fallow field. It used to be a horse pasture, but it's probably hasn't been pastured for five, six, seven years. You can see all the little dots on here is successional growth. We've got um, some pine trees starting to grow in there. To the east here is low land, I would say. It's seasonal. It's wet in the spring, but it will dry out in the summer and fall. Not tillable because it's too wet for too long. And you can see the, the line here where it is tillable. This is reed canary grass. These little pockets are reed canary grass. I'm going to talk about reed canary grass and some of the things I've done on my property for that in time. Uh, a mixture of hardwoods and pine trees there. Hunter-wise, nobody hunts the west side. Nobody hunts the north side. The east side does get hunted. There are pro There's one good hunter on there, and I know him, and we communicate a lot. He's a good guy, so he, an ethical hunter. Um, he'll let the little ones go, the little bucks go. So uh, I like him. We communicate well. I always wish him the best. I actually helped him find a nice eight-point buck he shot on his place that came on my place a year or two ago, and that was a lot of fun. South side of the property here is also farmed. Hunter-wise, this gets leased out to different people. I think maybe they do a two or three year lease to hunters because it seems like it, there's different people there every few years and they hunt it differently every few years, which kind of brings me to maybe the first thing that I would say about your property. As you sit here thinking about your property, I will say what I have learned from owning this for, what was it, 25 years or so now, that things outside your property change. So a few examples of that. To the west here, when I bought the property 25 years ago, it used to be a corn, soybeans, maybe once in a while some wheat rotation over and over and over. And the, the deer love corn and beans, right? So my property, I kind of set my property up back then to take advantage of that. The deer would bet on my property, travel out there and back quite often. But about 
four, maybe five years ago, it changed. And that's why I want you to think about your property. Like what's going on outside your property? You think you know it's going to stay the same, but it's going to change. How that changed is the a different farmer bought that property and now they farm pickles on there instead of corn and soybeans. Deer don't go nutso for pickles. I've never seen deer pile out of my property to eat pickles. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. So that changed how my property works, how it hunts, how the deer flow on there. Uh, another change that happened, completely unexpected, is in this northeast corner, you can see I've got a sanctuary blind there, but and that's because we used to call this five acres here sanctuary. I kind of left it alone. That was like the main bedding area. It was where you just didn't go in there. You wanted super duper security in there for the deer. Well, what happened was the neighbors sold a five acre chunk right here to somebody else, somebody they knew, but still, and those people turned it into a personal campground. So there's a few campers in there and uh, some other uh, vehicles and stuff that they store in there, which is fine. I mean, people can do that. They own the property. They can do what they want. But it changed my property. It changed what I used to think uh, or how the deer flowed in and out of the property. Again, changing where my hunting setups were. So things changed there. Last one I'll bore you with is down here on the south. You can see I've got this railroad blind here. The reason I put that there is deer would bed up in here and then they would flow down here when it's still light out. They'd get up, they'd stretch, they'd flow down here, nibble a little bit in this food plot behind our house, go down here, eat some apples. There's a few apple trees in here. They'd eat some apples for a while, waiting for it to get a little bit darker. And then they would flow out into this field once it got pretty dark. And so that's why I had this blind right here. But again, another change. What happened was one of the one of the hunters that leased this land down here, he thought it would be a good idea to put a tent blind right in the middle of this field right here. This field was harvested, so it was flat, and the blind stuck out like a sore thumb. And the deer, within a day or two, immediately changed their pattern. So this pattern that had been here for years and years and years was gone because a guy that I have no control over put a blind out here. So again, I, I just tell you that. So I guess what I would suggest to you is that as you're putting your plans together this year, over time, I think you should consider making your land completely self-contained, making it completely independent. So that if anything changes around the outside perimeter of your property, you can still get deer on there. I mean, I, I just make sure you're providing food, water, cover, <clears throat> and a sense of security all on your own property. That way you'll always have deer there. But I would also say that if you do have farm fields or if you do have a swamp or a great bedding area outside of your property and it's utilized to get deer through your property today, keep it that way. It hasn't changed yet, but just be thinking that it could change. And if you think ahead and you design your property now and over the next few years so that if it ever does happen, you won't be surprised and have to start from zero. That would be my recommendation after 25 years of this stuff happening to me. Uh, so if we zoom in a little bit more on the property and then I'm going to be done. And I'll, again, I'll do other videos that have more detail on it. But this is, uh, I guess I'm just going to go over food plots and maybe blinds a second real quick. So right up in this corner is can i zoom in on this oh yeah i can zoom in a little bit so you can see over on this side here this is a little micro food plot here and this is a micro food plot here it is surrounded by early successional growth we went in there with a bulldozer about eight or ten years ago and bulldozed everything down and now it has grown up it's still nice and thick the deer love to be in there and bed in there we put those little micro plots to try to get larger bucks to move around in the daylight so we can get a shot at them that's the strategy with that now we move over here and i do not have a blind on that right now i'm letting a few generations go by so they get really used to using it over here we have what we call our north blind and if you've watched any videos you know what that is that's the place where janice harvested two nice bucks on opening day of gun season and she harvested they both came cruising through here because this is a bedding area i'll get into that some other video but she shot one right here and she shot one right here and uh, it was great it was a great time but go back and look at that video if you've heard me talk about the sahara food plots that's what this is up here very dry sandy food plots this is the west sahara this is the east sahara then i move over further to the east over here again i kind of have a similar setup here this right here is a little micro food plot right here 
and this is a micro food plot right here and I do have a redneck blind set up right there so north wind I can get in there and shoot a bow a crossbow is about 30 yards there maybe 35 yards to here um, and I'll get into more of the details set up on that some other time what else can I go over this is another food plot this is a big long food plot that goes through the center of the property you can see it starts here winds around over here this is all food plot area all in here that I do different things with and uh, I go through those experiments with you and it goes all the wraps all the way over to here here is the west food plot if you have been watching any of the food plot videos I've been doing where we're testing grain drills and different ways of should we mow it should we hit it with roundup does drilling work this is where all those experimental videos have been done pretty much all of them is in this west plot so all these different strips are all the different tests that we've been doing and overlooking this plot is what we call the west blind that's a redneck blind and you've seen us harvest a couple of nice bucks from this right here it also has that water hole with a licking branch right here that deer just seem to love to hit and uh, we'll go over that in another video so as we move around we've got another little food plot right here don't hunt over that one here's a fort that's new lots of work i want to do around here to draw deer in i'm gonna do a lot of videos on this to as it develops over time to try to pull the deer into the into the blind and here's a ridge blind that we have right here this kind of looks into the thick stuff here and uh, kind of went over the railroad blind there already so that is kind of the big overview of the property it gives you maybe a little bit of feel of the layout i'm going to talk about a lot of different pieces of the property a lot of different setups a lot of different things that i have tried that have failed you and i can probably learn more from the failures than i can what i think are successes and i mean i think that these are the things that made it su successful but uh, most important are e eliminating mistakes is probably more important than finding the right thing to do so thank you for watching i look forward to doing these other videos and getting into more detail and uh good luck hunting we'll see you